All right, you guys, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I'm your host, Rex Bear, and we have Robert H. Evans Jr. with us again from Starships Around the Sun. He has a network of Skywalkers around the world that are in search for Planet X and Nibiru, and he is sharing with us today approximately 22 or 23 photos that have been sent to him from people literally around the world. And some of these photos are quite compelling. Now, as you guys know, as a... Uh, reporter. I do my best to stay neutral on the majority of the topics here, so I'm just going to let Bob bring his evidence to the table, and you guys can make what you want with it. If you want to think it's lens flares, if you want to think it's, which they very well could be, if you want to think that it's, uh, as Chris Potter says, a flying cheese sandwich, if you want to think that there are um, you know, enormous amounts of swamp gas, I mean, it, it could be a number of things. So we're going to bring the information to the table, and you guys can call it entertainment you guys can call it conspiracy you guys can call it news whatever you want but i really appreciate you show, uh, showing this with us here bob how the heck are you not bad doing pretty good uh the weather's been just nasty out here in pacifica for about a week and now we've got some sunshine coming through okay um i know a lot of your listeners including yourself rex are a little bit leery about some of this stuff but ever since the last show we've done a lot of the webcams, the weather webcams, and the webcams that were in different areas, uh, hotels, motels, whatever, have all supposedly been turned where they can't see the skies anymore. Uh, several of my friends lost their computers for one reason or another. So a lot of the photographs I'm getting now, they're from individuals who are on Facebook. Now, I've tried to put the names underneath, right next to each one of the photographs. Uh, the photographs you have, not on the email I sent to you. I just put the dates there, going backwards from 2017, back to November 1st. So, all those photographs, most of them are coming from the Middle East. Uh, a friend of mine named Whale, uh, he has several friends over in the Middle East, and I cannot pronounce those names because they come right through in, in their, their script. And I know you see them on the photographs. They're being clearly seen in the Middle East still. I'm hearing rumors that the Israelis, the Israeli government, they're going to be acting on something really soon. I can't verify that. I just say I'm hearing rumors. So um, people around the planet are seeing this. People over in China. Japan, over in the Middle East, over in England, up in uh, uh, Scotland, Ireland, over in there, and we're seeing it over here. Now, a lot of people are saying, Bob, I see the photographs you're posting, but we're not seeing anything in the skies. And a friend of mine said, and I can't verify this, a friend of mine told me that the government is using some type of lasers to make them disappear in the skies. Can't verify that, but that's one, one thing this person told me. They're using high technology, either human or someone else's, to make these things be very uh, hard to see, if ever, in the skies. Here in Pacifica, California, we've had the skies filled several days in a row with chemtrails. Now, what is a chemtrail? A jet airplane flying at high altitudes, the hot exhaust coming out of the engines, they put contrails, where you'll see them in the skies, but they dissipate rather quickly behind them. Chemtrails, you can look in the sky, and that huge thing will go miles and miles and miles behind it. Plus, the chemtrail shifts left to right in the skies. The contrail will not do that. The contrail will just suddenly dissipate. But when you see the chemtrails pattering out left and right, and they fill up the sky where the sky is not clearly blue anymore, that's a chemtrail. Sorry for too much chatting there. No, you're fine, Bob. Let me jump in real quick because 
you can't use the term chemtrail because you'll be labeled a conspiracy theorist. But the CIA director came out just a couple of weeks ago. I saw a video and he said, what you're seeing is called stratosphere aerial injections. So he yes. did come out and admit to it. But you just it's like they use these terms now. So if you say chemtrail, people are automatically going to think conspiracy theorist or woo woo unless they're in the know. And most people now do realize because you can look up at the clouds and you can see the X patterns, the checkerboard patterns. Exactly. They dissipate and turn into weird clouds. It's, it's exactly. definitely, I see it all the time. Now, I will tell you this, now, Bob, we did go out and pick up a very high-end telescope for the money. I mean, it's not like a $10,000 telescope, but it was about 1500 bucks. We've got a really nice camera that attaches to that that then goes and connects to the computer. So it's a Celestron Nexstar 8-inch telescope, and we're going to do our best to find any anomalies in the sky. Now, not only that, but then we could show you guys close-ups of the moon, different planets, and the sun with certain filters. So if there's any weird activity, a lot of times you'll see it on Soho and exactly. stuff like that. Maybe we can pick it up in our own backyard. But what are we looking at? This this first picture that we're looking at, Bob, this one's from Leon, and this was taken on the 15th of this this month, actually. So January 15th. Okay, so we're, so, so we're, we're, we're in uh, 2017. Okay, hold on a second. All right. Now, I need to throw something in there really quick. A huge laboratory here in the United States in 2006, 2007, they collected samples from Italy and from the state of Texas. And they ran these samples completely. And I still have this lab report. This lab report said the samples clearly showed man-made fibers that were in these samples. And these samples were being put in the skies all around the world. The United States, Italy, Europe, and they called it more gallons. This was a huge laboratory. Not me. Not me looking into the sky. They fully checked these samples. Okay. That's enough of that. This was a picture from today. It was just a couple of hours old on Facebook. You can clearly see the sun. And you can clearly see two other objects in the sky. Are these other objects? Are they lens flare? You're the expert there, uh, Rex. Uh, I'm not an expert. I wouldn't go that far. Well, you're, you're more of an expert than I am. Let's put it that way. Okay, so this was just today within the last couple of hours where here's the sun right there in the center. You have what looks like another white object just to the left of it. And then just below that, a little bit diffused, so maybe that could have been a flare, showing three, two things next to our sun. And it's full color. Now, if we go to, okay, and let's go to the next one here. This one was taken from Skywatch Media on the 11th of this month. It looks like it was taken from the inside of an airplane. And the only problem when you see the, the shots taken through windows right. especially airplanes as i heard that there are multiple panels so there, yes i've heard the same thing um this person did take it looking out the window uh supposedly the person said that everyone was told to keep their their blinds down for some reason uh there's our sun right there in the center uh and then there's one two three and four objects they could, could they possibly say where Sorry to interrupt, no. Bob. Did they say, did they say what country they were in, where they were flying to, what area they were over? No, they didn't. Some people okay. on Facebook they're being very quiet where they're taking the photographs now. The, the neat thing is, if if we're going to find this infamous planet, if it's out there, if it's a brown dwarf star, if it's an entire solar system that's bringing with it, people are going to need the coordinates. So. When images like this get sent to you, if you could take it even a step further and say, hey, this is a great image now, th this is definitely a possibility, send us the coordinates, and then you can get it out to astronomers sure. that are you know, amateurs and people just in their backyard that have telescopes. We can, point our, we can point them in that direction, and if there's something there, if you've got enough people collaborating on it, you should be able to pick something up. And then some people say a lot of times you can't find these things unless you've got infrared. Well, they do have options that you can hook up to telescopes that are infrared options too. So that's right. a pretty I've good image. Now, 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 I would now, like to, now, go ahead. Here's one point I want to point here. I've heard this from several people, whether they know, whether they're just guessing or not. We have seen 
eight objects in our skies since April 10th, 2015. Do these objects have their own satellites also? I do not know. Okay? Do they have moons, asteroids, whatever? Because the planet Nibiru, according to NASA's photograph in 2008, has 13 satellites. Now, do each of these other satellites, do they have their own orbiting satellites? I do not know. So I'm not quite sure exactly what we're seeing. And I'll be very honest with that. I've only now, been able to pick out... Go ahead. No, okay, I, I'm sorry. I, I was going to jump on to the next... Totally hear what you're saying there. I was just going to jump on to this photo that was taken on the 7th on 1-7-2017. Now, this one doesn't say who it was taken from on the, on the screen here. I like this one because this one wasn't taken through a window. And no. you can tell that this isn't, at least to me, it doesn't look like lens flare. And you can see clearly the, the light source, what looks like the sun. But then underneath it, there's another light source, which makes me wonder, could, is that the sun that we're looking at? Or is that something above the sun? This one, Do you know what state this is in or what state? The person did not mention it, no. Uh, I had posted some stuff on to Facebook. Picture right here, Alex. Yeah, I had posted some photographs uh, in reply to someone else here on Facebook this one day on January 7th. And this one person popped up a couple of photographs saying that they were seeing this in their skies. Now, a lot of my friends on Facebook have been mentioning that their computers have been taken out by viruses or whatever over, over the months, and people have been refused back onto Facebook. Uh, and then they're, they're coming back up under different names or changing their names instead of the way they originally had to, like, uh, end name first and then their first name. So a lot of people are being very quiet on Facebook now. I've even seen a couple of anonymous photographs. And I've been very careful about those photographs. You know, if it's going under anonymous, I usually don't send those to yourself or to a couple other people I've been on their shows. So, yes, it looks to me that the sun was down below, and here's this big yellowish-looking thing in the sky above it. That's my take on this photograph. It's a good image, and once again, it could be the sun, so I don't know, and underneath it, it could just be some type of optical illusion or reflection, but I do think that that's a great image. And then I'd like to jump down to the next one that came out on the 7th. It looks like this is another one that was possibly from the Middle East just because of the, yeah. the yes, font. Yes, it is. And this and was, this, did they give, was this like in India or Pakistan or, or do you know where this is located? Over in, over in Egypt, as far as I've been told. Okay, Egypt. So, yes, it's over, uh, this is a friend of a friend of mine named Whale. A Whale, I, saw that, I think he's that, I'm not going to say, his first name is W-A-E-L. Uh, and he's always been showing these photographs um, and he's been doing, this one guy, this one guy is a friend of his, and this person's been getting excellent photographs in the Middle East. Uh, I've gone to his webpage many times, but nothing is in English. And I don't play around with Google Translate anymore, because people have told me that it's not translating it correctly. Uh, I like his page. He's not a friend of mine. He doesn't know. Uh, so I go on his page every once in a while, and... He's in some really excellent photographs. Okay, and let's go down below that. It looks like you sent me a double on the one that was just above that, so we'll skip that one. And then okay. there's one right below that that says CNN. I want to skip that one because I don't know, you know exactly if I can use that or not because it's got the CNN report on it. But let's go right below that where, okay, look. where it looks like something out of a sky cam or something out of a webcam essentially. And it was taken so on the twenty fourth of last year, twelve twenty four. Right. Okay, twelve twenty four. Uh, is it twelve twenty six or twenty four? No, this one's twelve twenty four. This one's from twelve twenty four, two thousand sixteen. Okay, twelve twenty four. It says Anil, yes. Pi Anil Pires, Perez. Yeah. Yes. 
That one's taken directly from an observatory. So you can see the west part there and over to the left you see east. So this is what this one observatory was seeing in their skies. Uh, almost every observatory has this, this um, like a, uh, a circular view where they look up and they're looking straight at the night sky and they'll have east, west, north, and south as you're seeing right there. And here's this big half, uh, quarter circle of something that's in the sky. It's right there above them. I've seen this many times since 2015. Usually it's nice and clear in the skies. This one was kind of a like a quarter moon or something, but it wasn't our moon because it's broad daylight. Let's so go to the, the next one part? now. On, sure. Oh, okay. On, on 1219, this one I think is fascinating. Again, another one looks like from possibly the Middle East or Egypt, and it looks like a crescent moon to the left and then the sun going down to the right on the horizon there. What's your take on this one? 1219, 2016. Okay, 2016. This one was, again, from that same type of person. Uh, the sun is just, it looks like it's going down. And this huge quarter, uh, um, like God's fingernail off to the left, it's just starting to show itself. And he had several other, he or she had several other photographs, and it clearly was not our moon. This was something else large in our skies besides the moon. It's a beautiful picture right there. I mean, if you look at the, that's almost the kind of picture that you could have as a desktop or yes. as a poster. That's a very surreal image. I like that one a lot. Now, it, you know, to me, it looks like a crescent moon, but it's huge. I mean, that's, it's enormous, especially compared to the, the sun that's setting there. So if it's something, it could be some type of just beautiful optical illusion or not. I don't know. I'd like to, you know, if we look at the next image below that, this one's from 1217 and there's, I can actually debunk this one pretty quick and I'll tell you why because at first when this was going around the internet and making the YouTube circles on videos there was video footage of this thing and, and people are saying it looks like the Death Star it looks like Cosmic Hubert it looks like Pac-Man and it does it, it does look like that this telescope that I are you looking at the same image that I'm looking at yes that's okay, the same that image that showed up on February 18th in the skies uh, one of my friends caught it with a green filter showing that exact same hole in the center or often that's a a correct image okay yeah I've, uh, my friends have caught it with telescopes whatever since then it's gotten larger and larger and larger so this was an i have an original photograph of this thing from an observatory and from in the sky with a guy using a green filter so this is real this is let a real say, object. I'm not saying it's not a real object, but let me finish what I was saying if I can about I'm it. Sorry. I'll go ahead and de Oh, that's okay. No problem. I can debunk the hole in the center of it, though, just because um, yesterday, actually, when I had my telescope out, I was looking at uh, one of the stars in the western sky. And because those stars are so bright, if you have video mm -hmm. imagery on it as well, it has to be perfectly still. Because if it's not perfectly right. still, even just the most minute vibration, because it's so far away, it will make it shake. Now, what that hole is in the center is actually the object itself and what you're seeing around it is the light that it's emitting whether it's from another star hitting that object or whether it's a star itself and because it's so bright when the camera picks it up it ha it literally blacks it out it does it can't it's such it, the sensors it messes with the sensors so what you're seeing the object itself is that hole it's the center it's a solid object but the way that the lights and the camera picks it up that's the type of image that you'll get i was looking at the exact same thing the other day when people were saying hey look up in the western sky people think it's venus but it's not venus i'm, I'm pretty sure it's venus Maybe Maybe it's a star, but whatever it was, it was giving me that exact same image through the telescope. Okay. Does that mean, are you following me? Well, I, I can to a point. Like I said, this other friend, he caught it with a camera with a green filter. And it showed the exact same type of thing, but looking at it from a different angle. So I'm no expert on this. You're more of an expert than I am. You have a lot more people are are smarter than both of us are telling you things. So, you know, that's the only thing I can say is that from 02, February 18th, I have the photographs several in a row using a welder's green filter this guy used. And it's the same looking object. 
so whether you can see more light because it would look it looked exactly the same thing but green. Now a lot of these shiny ones are showing up more and more out of Australia and New Zealand. That one person down there using his is a telescope, uh, and I've, I've seen some. And I admit that the the black thing is kind of like, you know I've seen the videos where it's kind of going around you know because the, the 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 camera that's taking the photographs is being you know just moved tiny bits. So I understand what you're saying too, but the photographs I have taken with a green welder's filter show exactly the same thing except they're green. So we'll you don't see the jump bright. Down to the, okay, okay. So we'll we'll jump down to the next one then. Twelve one two thousand sixteen. This is a green image. It looks like it was taken from Mark. And you know I can actually take images of multiple stars in the sky that will look just like that, uh, right above okay. it. One like we said with the big hole in the center of the big Death Star. So it's not that one specific object. You could do that with a multitude of stars and planets out there, just based on the way that the the filter and the the lens and the telescope, everything that works together, and the way that it's picking up that light, it's going to pick something like that up. So it's just kind of out of focus sure. and it's so far away. But th this image right now, the next one that I want to look at with you, Bob, that I think is a good image is from Mark. And this was taken on the 1st of December last year, so a little over a month and a half ago. And this looks like there's a, a secondary object just, I guess you could say, at the 12 o'clock position right. above the sun. Exactly. And this one was taken with like a welder's filter, you said, or some type of green Film. That one appears to be yes. I'm not. I'm not an expert on this stuff. So it does appear this person's using a greenish-looking filter of some type. And the sun's at the very bottom, and there's that that secondary object right above it. Yes. Yeah. Now, did they say? Did Mark say where that was taken either, or did he want to leave that anonymous as well? Almost all the people I'm talking to, they're leaving it almost exactly quiet. They're not saying where they're taking it, what they're using, or anything. They're just, they don't want any of the dark side to go on them, supposedly. I can't blame them. Sure. Now, there's another one that was taken on the 27th. It looks like 1127. This one as well from Mr. Perez. So we'll jump onto this one real quick. And it looks like to the right of it a little bit, looks like I guess you could say it about the 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock position is that the anomaly that he was pointing out? Yes. All right. And that's uh, 1127 216D, I think. E. 2E. Two, two e. E. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you know, people are catching these things left and right, you know, using their own cameras, using telescopes. Because, like I said, a lot of the webcams, which were really helpful, giving you all the date and time along the top of the image. You know, a lot of people were seeing other people's computers being taken out, and they didn't want the same thing, so they're keeping it rather quiet. Now, it looks like here's another one that was taken on 11-27-2016. Uh, it's B Gem Tops. Yes. From EarthCam. Now, do you think that's two suns right there? Jim Tops has always been really, really honest with me, and person said that it was actually two suns in the skies. No ifs, ands, or buts. Now, when I look at this image, what I'm seeing is that building to the left yes. shows almost the exact same light as to the right. That's a glass building, and it looks like that it's reflecting be. off of a window or something, like it's a reflection off of the building itself. Do you see that? I see it, and I understand what you're saying, but Jim Pumps was very clear with this earth cam that, yes, it looks like a reflection, but it wasn't. You know, uh, I didn't take the photograph, so I can't honestly say one way or the other. Let's go to this one from, I think this one was originally taken from Teresa Caldwell. I like her. She's a nice lady. This one was taken on 11-15-2016. And I, we had shown this once before, I think, in a previous video. This is one of the images that, that I think is uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty compelling. Was this yeah, taken in Mesa, big, Arizona? Is that right? Uh, this one here, um, I think it was hers, yes, and it probably was taken in Mesa, Arizona, yes. This is one of my yep. fouls. I didn't put the name on, underneath it. 
Well, that's okay. This one I remembered because Teresa actually, this image from last year, she had it on her Facebook page. And this was one of the images that I looked at and I thought that it was so good that there must have been some type of something added, you know, to the light or something like that. And Teresa said no. So this is definitely a cool image. And you can certainly see all the chemtrail clouds and the just haze that's in the background. They certainly spray the crap out of that area. So that's a good image. Let's let's go to this one from 1115. 2016. This is 11 15 2016 E. And this one, it looks like is, there's an uh, anomaly in the background there. That's an interesting you can image. See so, two anomalies. On that one there, you, you, can, see, you can see two anomalies. Two. Yes, there's one huge thing right behind that tree in the foreground. And then up at the top near the one o'clock level, there's another one right there. So you have this huge thing of what looks like stripes being picked up right behind the tree. Then you have another anomaly right there above it at the one o'clock level. So you actually have two things being seen in the night sky. And that's the 1115216E. Is that the one you were talking about? Yes, that's the one. And then the next one, too, that I want to share with the audience, this one was taken 11-12-2016-B is the uh, the picture that you have it titled Skywatch Media. This one yes. appears to have two anomalies above, you know, two orbs above the sun here, and those are lit up pretty well, and you can see the chemtrail clouds getting lit up as well. So the only thing I'm wondering about this one is it looks like it was taken inside of a window because you can see a whole bunch of shadow of type area. on the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and then those two upper things, they would be behind the sun, away from us to be that light in the sky. And that's the same thing which people were in the Colbrin said, since this thing was showing up behind our sun, that's where they start seeing all this stuff. Now... John Moore also says the same thing. John Moore, he's a retired military intelligence person. I'm not sure if he was on your show or not. Uh, he's had several videos out recently where he's been talking in his videos exactly like I've been warning about since 2017. So here's a person I've never met. Never met this guy. This guy has his own radio show. I've never been on his radio show. I've sent him photographs, never got any replies. And here he is, he's saying the exact same thing, that this is something that's coming from behind our sun. And we're just barely starting to see it in the skies right now. And those three objects you see right there, there's the sun at the bottom. And you can almost see like a light flare coming off the sun at around the 2 o'clock position, and it's whipping up. Can you see that in that photograph? Yes. Okay. And then these other two objects above it, for them to be that bright, they're behind the sun. At least that's what I've been told. And I understand the brightness part. Those two things are on the opposite side of our sun to be that bright, especially that late in the afternoon or morning. A lot of these people, they never say when it was taken in the morning or not. And I don't have all the data at the top of the photograph to know it was taken nighttime or, e or morning. But yes, that's a fantastic photograph right there. And that's why and I sent it to you today. Right, right. Yeah, this is definitely a good one, Bob. Let's and let's jump to the next one too by Taunton Jean. This was taken November of last year, November twelfth, it looks like. It's eleven twelve, two thousand sixteen A. And that is the Antarctica station of uh, God, my mind's going nuts now. It's 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 something station number three. That station, I have photographs going back to two thousand eleven. 2011, and something was caught in that same location. 
by that same exact camera. Now this camera shows one object and a second object right above it. Now this this one interesting it has all the data right there at the top of the at the top of the in, image. Two thousand let's see it's two thousand sixteen. Uh, uh, November 12th, and it's taken at 0358 in the morning. It's the uh, Newmire Station Number 3, Antarctica. So you clearly see two objects right there above the station. Now, this is the same station that showed the first of these eight objects on, December, on uh, April 10th. 2015, very clear in the skies right above it. And then my friend Sharon caught it in her skies over Illinois in color on April 29th, 2015, the first of these eight that were being caught in our skies. So this station is being run by the Jesuits. The Jesuits have been paying for all of the Earth's observatories to track this stuff. It's being kept very quiet. You know, I'm I'm looking at that image and it almost kind of looks like a lens flare to me because if you look at the pinkish, anytime you see a lens flare, it's really easy to pick out the ones that have the reddish wings. And for somebody that's never okay. seen that before that starts researching Planet X and they take a picture of the sun and they see that anomaly, they think, because it looks like the red kachina, it looks like the wing destroyer. I mean, if you think that in your mind, but then sure. you can do a video of it and you can move it back and forth and that lens flare will move back and forth with the camera. So it's very easy to bunk with video. So when you look at that, the way that it's parallel with the actual sun itself, to me, that looks like a lens flare. But, you know, that, that is a cool image nonetheless. And I have seen some very interesting images from Antarctica. If any, if there's anywhere that you can find this brown dwarf, there, I bet you Antarctica is one of the places to be. That's just a very mystical right. place. Um, let's go to the one that is 11-1-2016-B. This one, you can see the reflection off of the water, and then to the well, right of it. Okay, 11-11-2016. Uh, no, 11-1. 11-1. I'm skipping. We're skipping the 11-11. We're going to 11-1-2016-B. This one was taken from the Middle East as well. Okay, let me find that one. Okay. Okay. Okay, 11-01-2016-B. That one's taken from the Middle East also. Now you can see what I believe is the sun. It sees it shows the uh, the light going left and right uh, from about 11 o'clock down to about five. And then there's the nice orange thing in the sky right there, which also showing its image on the water right down below. Yes. All right, you guys, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I'm your host, Rex Baer, and we have Robert H. Evans Jr. with us again from Starships Around the Sun. He has a network of sky watchers around the world that are in search for Planet X and Nibiru, and he is sharing with us today approximately 22 or 23 photos that have been sent to him from people literally around the world. And some of these photos are quite compelling. Now, as you guys know, as a uh, reporter, I do my best to stay neutral on the majority of the topics here, so I'm just going to let Bob bring his evidence to the table, and you guys can make what you want with it. If you want to think it's lens flares, if you want to think it's, in which they very well could be, if you want to think that it's, uh, as Chris Potter says, a flying cheese sandwich, if you want to think that there are um, you know, enormous amounts of swamp gas, I mean, it, it could be a number of things. So we're going to bring the information to the table, and you guys can call it entertainment you guys can call it conspiracy you guys can call it news whatever you want but i really appreciate you show, uh, showing this with us here bob how the heck are you not bad doing pretty good uh the weather's been just nasty out here in pacifica for about a week and now we've got some sunshine coming through okay um i know a lot of your listeners including yourself rex are a little bit leery about some of this stuff but ever since the last show we've done a lot of the webcams, the weather webcams and the 
webcams that were in different areas, uh, hotels, motels, whatever, have all supposedly been turned where they can't see the skies anymore. Uh, several of my friends lost their computers for one reason or another. So a lot of the photographs I'm getting now, they're from individuals who are on Facebook. Now, I've tried to put the names underneath, right next to each one of the photographs. Uh, the photographs you have, not on the email I sent to you. I just put the dates there going backwards from 2017 back to November 1st. So all those photographs, most of them are coming from the Middle East. Uh, a friend of mine named Whale, uh, he has several friends over in the Middle East, and I cannot pronounce those names because they come right through in, in their, their script. And I know you see them on the photographs. They're being clearly seen in the Middle East still. I'm hearing rumors that the Israelis, the Israeli government, they're going to be acting on something really soon. I can't verify that. I just say I'm hearing rumors. So um, people around the planet are seeing this. People over in China, Japan, over in the Middle East, over in England, up in uh, uh, Scotland, Ireland, over in there. And we're seeing it over here. Now, a lot of people are saying, Bob, I see the photographs you're posting, but we're not seeing anything in the skies. And a friend of mine said, and I can't verify this, a friend of mine told me that the government is using some type of lasers to make them disappear in the skies. Can't verify that, but that's one, one thing this person told me. They're using high technology, either human or someone else's, to make these things be very uh, hard to see, if ever, in the skies. Here in Pacifica, California, we've had the skies filled several days in a row with chemtrails. Now, what is a chemtrail? A jet airplane flying at high altitudes, the hot exhaust coming out of the engines, they put contrails where you'll see them in the skies, but they dissipate rather quickly behind them. Chemtrails, you can look in the sky, and that huge thing will go miles and miles and miles behind it. Plus, the chemtrail shifts left to right in the skies. The contrail will not do that. The contrail will just suddenly dissipate. When you see the chemtrails pattering out left and right, and they fill up the sky where the sky is not clearly blue anymore, that's a chemtrail. Sorry for too much chatting there. No, you're fine, Bob. Let me jump in real quick because you can't use the term chemtrail because you'll be labeled a conspiracy